Alrighty, welcome back to Art for OUR. This is our YouTube channel. I'm Dan Priest, and uh, lately coronavirus has kicked my family's butt, except for mine. And so I've been hiding in the garage and uh, trying not to feel guilty about a lot of free time on my hands. <laughs> my family's totally fine, thankfully, but uh, it's been nasty for some of my my wife. Really got pretty sick because I came a really bad flu but thankfully everybody's doing okay now um, this is yet another piece of cherry wood for one of my patients uh, this generous fellow gave me a whole bunch from a big old tree he's got and he said he's gonna bring me a whole bunch more so this is definitely the gift that keeps on giving um, this is I don't even know what third attempt at a burning bush <laughs> If you watch my channel, you know I've, uh, for whatever reason, this this project has been cursed. I cannot pull it off. And finally got something that kind of looks like a burning bush. I'm going to let you decide. Uh, this piece of wood happened to have a, a split in it. Uh, it's kind of a crotch type growth. And so I thought it'd be a perfect one to use for this kind of project where it was naturally splitting anyway. A good place to put a window. We um, just finished up our year-end review of our finances for Art for OUR, and this is our first year. We started last year around late February, I want to say. <clears throat> I'd been doing some stuff before that, but as a website and as officially organized, we you know started in February, and we were able to raise uh, just over 36,000 bucks for the year. And a lot of that is due to you folks that are watching. Um, your views, your likes, your shares help us do that. Um, it's also due to sales of items. I can't believe it, but I don't have a single thing left to sell except for this item and some of the paintings I did a long time ago, which are still for sale. So thank you so much for your support. It's been amazing. Um, I want to say we've got 80 artists donating so far, and um, I don't know, we've had well over 100 different purchases. It's been great. It's been amazing. Better than I expected. Better than I'd hoped for. So hoping to double that this year. And the way the YouTube channel has grown, that's certainly possible. So um, appreciate your shout outs. Appreciate your advice over this year. Some of you get a good chuckle as you see me grow. I've come a long ways, have a long ways to go still, but um, you watch some of the early videos and I obviously didn't know what I was doing and now I kind of do. A long, lot more to learn though. So this was a bit of choke cherry uh, branch and um, the challenge is finding a miniature tree. <laughs> I can never... I can never find a branch that looks just right, so I end up cutting them up, re-gluing it, and kind of making my own little thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting better or worse at this, but uh, it worked out. Anyway, the uh, the money we raise at Art for OUR goes to Operation Underground Railroad to help fight child trafficking, child sex trafficking around the world. Um, those guys have rescued over 4,000 kids, uh, they've helped in the arrest of over 2,000 perpetrators. It's an amazing organization. Hope to be able to contribute a lot more, support a lot more. So anyway, that's, that is what we're doing here. Our channel has crossed some awesome milestones. We've hit 2 million views total, which blows my mind. Never thought for a minute we'd ever get that far. And if you look at the hours watched total, it's almost reached... Um, the total hours that I've been alive, <laughs> which is insane. I, I just turned 41. So um, anyway, obviously none of this would happen without you guys. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, some of your generosity has been far more than I ever would have asked of anyone. So thank you for that. Started this thing on a whim and uh, it's grown into far more. So um, a couple of disclaimers on this project. I didn't have my typical um, 
resin I use. I had some left over from previous projects. I had a lot of free time since uh, it was the holidays and Corona hit my family and everybody's in quarantine. So I had what I had and I used what I used and it's not the best. It set up a lot quicker than I expected. So I wasn't able to put the colored resin into the resin like I was hoping. So I ended up painting on the outside, which was kind of a new adventure. Um, anyway, probably the last time you'll see a bubble in any of my projects because I now have a uh, 15 gallon vacuum chamber and a pressure pot and I can't wait till my next project because it should be, I finally should be able to have the capacity to make it perfect. Um, this is uh, resin by Illumilite, which is a good company. They're not my, they're not a sponsor of mine, but they uh, do provide some great stuff and um, it worked out just fine. This casting method I've been kind of developing, uh, putting my projects in sand enveloped in a, a plastic sheet. The sheeting is uh, for flooring, goes underneath uh, hardwood floors and so on to um, dampen noise. It's stiff enough to keep the sand from filling into the, the to the windows and the cracks you're trying to protect. Um, and it's nice because if you accidentally punch a hole in it, the sand keeps from leaking. So I, I since I've used this this casting method, um, I have yet to have a leak problem. I've yet to dump hundred dollars worth of resin on the floor, which I've done in the past when I've used plastic sheeting and super glue or hot glue and all that, which is fine if you're doing little cracks. But if you're doing a big pour, you're taking a mighty risk. If there's a leak, you lose a lot of resin. Um, but I've got another another method up, up my sleeve that I'm going to show the next project, which is even better than this. Um, let's just say I get to enjoy making a whole lot of Play-Doh, <laughs> living out some childhood fantasies. It's an ever-evolving process. Um, it's a challenge to make windows and wooden fill full of resin it's different than filling little cracks that you see a lot of people do um so i've been working on different methods and this one's working out pretty well but every time i do a project i get a little bit better at it and waste a little less resin and anyway it's been a fun learning process i haven't given a shout out to laguna lately this is a laguna lathe the 1836 um, it's 120 volts, uh, I'm sorry, 110 volt. So there is a, a more powerful one that they're 220. The motor is slightly bigger, but on the lower geared setting for this lathe, it pretty much does the job. I rarely stop this thing with a tool. It's, it's a, a beast and it is so stable. The thing is incredibly heavy, so it never ever wiggles around unless I get too crazy. In which case I'm usually going at a speed that's too fast anyway, so. I love this thing. I've been paying my kids to clean up my garage and obviously the holidays hit us so it's a total mess. I had somebody mention they couldn't stand it when my floor is dirty. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's tricky. So usually when I'm out in the garage, it's late at night. And just trying to get some some quiet time and avoid my problems in life. And the last thing I want to do is uh, clean the garage. And boy, a lathe work sure makes a mess. It shoots all over the place. You can't quite see it in here, but there's some big, huge plastic sheets dividing this part of my garage from the rest of it because... We need to do the early stages of the resin turning. Um, you get some pretty nice chunks that fly off across the room. And mm -hmm. I got tired of uh, uh, cleaning it off of my car, <laughs> tracking it into my car and into the house. So I've been slowly perfecting my garage situation.
One thing I like about the way I'm casting resin lately, or my projects in resin, is that it allows for the resin to soak all the way around the project, which means it gets into the deeper cracks and seams that you might not have, might not actually see or notice are there. And then when you turn it, it really reduces the risk of the piece flying apart. Um, since I've started doing this method, I don't think I've had a piece come apart since. Um, I don't always use resin, but usually when I do, um, it's one benefit. And I think it may get aids to the longevity of the, the, the piece. It's unlikely to crack, but, you know, it really gets in there and bonds things together. One question I get a lot is, uh, especially with these windows I make in my bowls, uh, aren't I afraid that that thing's coming out like a five pound hockey puck to kill me? <laughs> um, the truth is, is when you work with resin and wood, unless it, the wood's covered in bark and there's some way that the bark could come off the wood, if it's just wood, um, that resin seeps into the pores of the wood and uh, it, it's never coming off. It is one and one and one piece. You know, it, it really seeps in deeply. So a couple of things. My mom gave me this book. It's a book I had when I was a kid. It calls, it's called Daniel's Duck. It's about a little kid that carves a duck out of wood. And you know how impressionable you are when you're a kid. So here I have a book with my name on it and a kid working on carving. And somehow in my mind, I interpreted that to be, oh, I must be a woodworker. I need to work on wood. So I got interested in it and I started carving back then. Um... I had a pocket knife with me all the time and I actually did get into woodworking quite a lot and then became an adult, went to med school, had four kids and kind of let it to the side until COVID hit and I had a ton of extra time in my hands. We had a shutter clinic about 50% of the way down when it first hit. We, we were open but nobody was coming in and so I had a lot of free time and we started doing more things. I got a small wen lathe which later we graduated to this uh, Laguna lathe. And boy, that was, uh, what, almost two years ago? And here we are. So it's funny how uh, you give a kid a little book, it might shape his future. <laughs> uh, the other picture that we flew past there was um, um, a, wood, uh, a hollowing system. It's called the simple hollowing system. And essentially it's just a mechanical arm that, that holds onto a carbide carving tip um, and clamps onto the lathe bed so that you can get deep inside these bigger vases um, safely. When you're that far off your tool rest, usually you want the tip of your tool right on the tip on the edge of that tool rest, which just makes it the safest. When you're way in there and you're hanging over your tool rest more than you know more than a, a centimeter or two, things get do get dangerous. So it's nice to have that tool securing system do the work for you and hold on to it for you so that it's, it decreases the risk of uh, getting a big catch and hurting yourself. So that's been a nice thing. When I first started this channel, um, initially I put a few wood turning videos up I have some sand pendulum paintings, um, not paintings, that's the wrong word, designs. Uh, we were dabbling all kinds of stuff just for fun. Um, but I did a lot of acrylic pouring painting. You, you can watch those videos. It's a fun abstract way of paint if you're no good with a brush like me. Um, but I've slowly been dabbling into painting with a brush. I've done four or five of those and been somewhat happy. I'm happy with the newer ones. And so I got brave. I sat here and stared at this thing for a long time and almost didn't paint it. I almost lost my nerve. <laughs> but then I did it anyway, and I'm 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 90% happy I did it. Certainly could have improved on it, but um anyway, that's that's how I decided to get the uh burning bush look, which of course is a biblical nod to uh Moses and the burning bush of Old Testament fame. Um Anyway, hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for the uh, support you guys have shown us for the last year and hope to many more projects in the future. Have a great one, and here's to a better year in 2022.